I guess we can begin. It's five o'clock. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, who, by the light of the Holy Spirit, instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant by the same spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through Christ our Lord. Our Lady, seat of wisdom, pray for us. St. Patrick, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, first of all, I, I need to begin with uh, some bad news, an apology. Apparently, the session on Sunday and the last Thursday were not recorded. Um, so I will have to, to, re, to redo them. I'll do that at a later date. Um, so you won't see those. Apologies for that. And um, <clears throat> hopefully this, this session has been recorded. Yes, Make, it is. Yeah. Yes, yeah, we'll have to be constantly on our guard, vigilant, because as we know, when we're doing the work of the Lord, the enemy is very excited, wants to trip us up at every turn. So, um, yes, so we, we have um, today's um, session, we're continuing. Up, I, I need to get the, the update the, the dictionary. I haven't had the chance. This week has been kind of busy. Um, I had to, to write two articles and um, I had short notice, but I fortunately got them done. So last week we looked at prepositions um, and um, I, I think perhaps I might have done too many at once. Um, so I think that's a learning experience for me, but we, we're going to be using them. And because the, the, um, the, the, the prepositions are so many, um, I thought I'd leave out the conjunctions, which, in, which I intended to do. Conjunctions are words that join um, other words, usually nouns and adjectives and sentences or phrases, I should say, in the sentence. So we have conjunctions like and, but, um, and so on. So I decided to do adjectives because they make a sentence more interesting. They tell, they, they tell us something about nouns and they are fairly easy in at least um, to half of them are fairly easy. Um, because they follow the same pattern as the nouns we've done. In other words, they belong to the first and second declension. The third declension adjectives we, we're not doing yet. Um, I'll approach those when we have done third declension nouns. So um, we had one well, session nine, um, because one of the sessions we had the, we went through the homework. So So what's going on? Okay. So I want to start off by just reviewing the prepositions that we did. Basically, we did, we did, we um we identified the two basic prepositions. That is those that are attached or used often with the accusative and those used with the ablative. And then there are a few, three, four, that are used with both. So I came across a little verse um, about the prepositions used that take um, the ablative. And um, this is how it goes. It's just three lines. Right, put the ablative with the Cum et corum ab and a, sine tenus pro and pray. Okay, so that's it. So if, I don't know if you can remember that. Um, put the ablative with de, cum and corum ab and a, sine tenus pro and pray. So these 
prepositions all go with the ablative. I couldn't find a corresponding one for the accusative though, but you can presume the others would go, go there. These, however, the, the, the main ones. So then all other prepositions take the accusative, except three, four of them, in, sub, and super. And these, and, um, these take both. Okay, so they can take both the, the ablative and the accusative. Okay. So in the, in the case of the, well, what, what's the distinction? How do we know, or better still, how do we interpret, how do we translate? So once we have motion, once we have movement, once we go in somewhere, and this movement may be physical, or it may be um, virtual, I guess, as when you're praying to someone, there's a, 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 this kind of motion, we would use the accusative. So if we, if we have villa, villa is a house, of, you know, we have the English villa, which is a house in the country. So in, in villam, means into the house, okay? We're going into the house. Or we have sub muros, muros, from which we get mural, is a wall. So sub muros means we're going up to the walls. So we get, in both of those, we have the sense of motion, of going to. Um, if we have ad dominum, okay, for instance, aura, Pro, um, ora ad dominum, ora is to pray, okay? We pray to the Lord. Again, there's that sort of sense of motion. We're going somewhere. But if it's static, <clears throat> if place is meant, so the place where something is happening, so we, we use the ablative in that case. So again, we have villa, which is a house. So if it's in villa, it's in the house, okay? If it's in Vilam, it's into the house. And in the case of the walls, submuris is beneath or underneath the walls. So as I said, um, we have um, mural as an English word, which is the wall. So that's, um, that, that hopefully will give you an idea of when to use the two. So once you have motion, accusative. Once you have place, um, use the um, ablative. So that concludes at least a, a summary, I hope, of the of the um, prepositions. So put the ablative with the cum et coram ab and a sine tenus pro and pre. Okay, so we're going to look at adjectives. Adjectives are important. We use them all the time. Basically, they, they um, illustrate, they paint words. They make words more interesting. And they do this by limiting the words in some way. So adjectives are basically describers of nouns. So if we take um, uh, <clears throat> something like a hat. Okay, it could be a large hat, a tall hat, a black hat, a furry hat, um, you know, a wide hat, a feathered hat, a leather hat. It could, we, once we have hat as the noun, and it covers a, a whole range of hats. But once I use an adjective, I'm limiting it. <clears throat> In, other, in mathematics, we say we've made a subset. We have a subset of hats. So you have the universal set of hats, but once you have um, uh, woolen hats, it's just one part, and you have all the other non-woolen hats um, as well. So this is what an adjective does. It, it creates a subset, it limits, it modifies the, the noun. There are two classes of adjectives. Okay, those, the first, those 
that belong to the first and second declension. And these are the ones we're going to be looking at. So the first declension, if you remember, the now the um, nominative case ends in A and the genitive in AE. And then <clears throat> in the second declension, we have two groups. We have the masculine and the neuter. In the first declension, we only have feminine uh, um, nouns. In second declension, we have the masculine, which um, have the nominative in US, <clears throat> with the exceptions, of course, um, the, the who is an exception. So we, we have those that end in US with the genitive in I. And um, the, the, also in the second declension, we have the neuter, okay, which has the, the nominative in um, um, and because it's second declension, it has the genitive in I. So these we've dealt with, the first and second declension. And then the other class of adjectives are those that belong to the third declension, which as I said, we will be doing later on. Okay, so where does the word adjective come from? Well, it's a Latin word, that's a surprise. It comes from adjectum. Now, ject, um, ject basically means to throw. Okay, so we have object, for instance. Uh, we have abject, so you thrown down. Inject, you throw in, um, and so on. Um, so, so it means to something to throw, or it means something that's added. Okay, so that, that's basically its meaning. So it's something added, or something thrown in. So the adjective is a word that's thrown in next to the noun to modify the, the noun in some way. So then, adjectives are words added alongside the noun to do what? To limit the noun. Okay, so um, number, for instance, you know, so you have all the hats, as we mentioned before. If I say we have three hats, then it's sort of limited. Or to qualify it, the hat could be made of leather or wood or wood, or leather or wool or some other material. It modifies it. So in that case, the, we're saying the thing is soft or hard or, you know, it characterizes it, character, characterizes it in some way, you know. And how in many different ways, so in regard to color, so the adjectives basically would describe color or shape or size or nature or number. So these are the ways in which a noun can be modified. Okay, so the, the idea is that we look at the adjective and recognize it because we see it's doing something to the noun. And then we have to determine, of course, what it does and what it does will, be, it will come from what, it, what the adjective means. In Latin, generally, the adjectives follow the nouns they describe. So we put the noun first, and then the adjective. That's the usual, the general way in which it's done. And what is a little tricky sometimes is that the adjective could be several words, could be separated by, from the noun by several words. So you could have the noun and then two or three words after and then the adjective, or sometimes the adjective could be further away. Um, so it means now when we look at the sentence, we look at we look for the verb, and then we look for the noun. Um, so we have basically the idea of what's happening. And then we look for other words that will come in. So one of the words we look for is an adjective. Now, the good news is that the adjective will usually be in the same gender um, and the same um, case, class, case, the same case as the noun. So if the noun is in the nominative, um, the adjective will also be in the nominative. If the noun is in the genitive, the adjective will be in, in the genitive. 
So that makes it a little easier to deal with. So because the word order doesn't matter in Latin, um, uh, the, the adjective doesn't need to be immediately next to the noun or as in English before the noun. So in English we'd say um, the, uh, uh, a green hat, for instance. I don't know, I'm stuffing hats there. Or we can say the, the three-legged table or the, the round, the, the circular table or the square table. So we usually put the adjective first in English, but in Latin it's usually put afterward. Um, so the other good news is that the adjectives belong only to the first, second, and third declensions. So they, there are no adjectives taken in the form of fourth or fifth declensions. So that's good news. And as I mentioned earlier, adjectives always agree with the nouns they modify in case. So if the noun is in the vocative, the adjective will be in the vocative. If the noun is in the dative, the adjective will be in the dative case. In number, so if the noun, if the noun in, is um, ma, um, a nominative plural, the adjective will be nominative plural. Okay, if the noun is in the ablative singular, the if the noun is the ablative singular, the, the adjective will be nominal, it will be ablative singular as well. And in gender, so if the noun is feminine, the adjective is feminine. If it's neuter, the adjective is neuter, and so on. So basically, we can say that the adjective will look very much like the noun we're dealing with. Hoping that's not made it too difficult. Let's see what we can do. Of course, the uh, grammar or grammar is, is can be a pain. So we need to look at something else about adjectives, the, the way they function. Okay, they can function in three ways, three different ways. And we have these horrible words attributed. Attributive, attributive. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? To what do you attribute these words, these thoughts? Okay, predicative. Sounds a bit like preaching, doesn't it? Or predicate. Substantive, substance, right? So we can now look and see what these words mean and we'll make it easy, at least I'm trying to, we're going to look at it in English to start off with. So the attributive and the predicative adjectives are essentially possessive. Oh gosh, another word. Possessive, that means it belongs to, it's mine, it's yours, it's theirs, it's somebody's. So the, <clears throat> so the attributive and the predicative ad adjectives essentially govern uh, situations of possession. That is, in the case of the attributive, we say, my hat, our friend, your brother, his girlfriend, her shoes, its tail, their game. Okay, it's, so we have the noun in each of those cases. Don't ask me to repeat them, I don't know what they were. But you can see that the adjective, my, our, yours, his, hers, its, theirs, all qualified the noun. So my hat, it's not your hat, it's not his hat, it's not their hat, it's mine. And so in all of the hats in the world, this one is mine. Okay, it's attributed to me, it's my possession. Okay. In the predicative, I think the easiest way to look at it is that of equality. Okay, so in this case, we're going to use the same words. Now notice, um, this is very interesting um, for those people who teach English or teach in English. Um, my goes to mine, our goes to ours, your goes to yours, his is his, her is hers, its 
is this, and this is that, and there is this. Okay. Now it, we say this all the time. We don't even really think about it until you know, we can actually to study it and see. Actually, we 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 speak and understand without even knowing what the details of what we're saying. You know. So then we have again in English, the hat is hers. Notice the is. The hat is mine. Okay, so that's, it's a, it's a sort of equality. We're not saying she's a hat, but we're saying it is hers, meaning it belongs to her. And that's S, that's what that S does. Okay, the books are, because they're plural, the books are plural, the books are theirs. Okay, we can go uh, further and say the game is his. Now, the only one that doesn't change in English is his. It's the same whether it's attributive or whether it's predicative. Um, so the, the, in English, we have that this distinction and my and mine. Also, I guess thy and thine, um, we have our, ours and so on. So those two are fairly straightforward. The substantive adjective is used, is one that is used as a noun. And that's where a little um, uh, uh, confusion can begin because you might be looking for the noun and you don't see the noun. But again, we do that in English. So when we say only the good die young, well, good, good what? The good stands for something, but we don't put it there. We mean obviously good people, good men, good women, good children, forbid, okay? But it means that there is a noun that's hidden, not expressed, but we understand it. A word to the wise. Well, what's a wise? Well, the noun is missing. A word to the wise man, the wise boy, the wise girl, the wise woman. You know, and we do that all the time in many different ways. We will use the adjective um, in place of a noun. And in 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 Latin, that happens quite frequently. The adjectives are used um, because they, they they're very rich. Okay. Now, so I hope I haven't lost anybody. In fact, I hope you found found this interesting. Um, I did. Okay. So we're going to look at the first um, the, the first one, the attributive adjectives. Okay. These adjectives, the attributive, um, adjective attributes a certain quality or character to the noun, and they are usually close to the noun. In other words, they either follow the noun or they before the noun. So it's going to attribute, it's going to give, it's going to decorate, it's going to cover, it's going to shade, color, and so on, lots of adjectives, the noun in some way. Okay. So we have an example, an attributive um, adjective is a quality or the, sorry, an attribute is a quality or characteristic of the person, of the thing, of the group, okay, etc. So for example, we say, it's a sunny day. So we have all the days in the year and this day is sunny. So sunny is the adjective and it's qualifying the day. It's telling us something about the day. Okay, you could, we could say it's a rainy day. It's a cold day, it's a hot day. Okay, it's a rough day, a rough day at work. You know, it was an enjoyable day. All of these are adjectives, they qualify in the day. They're giving a certain character to the day, a miserable day. So, <coughs> <clears throat> Pardon me. So if we have um, uh, an example, 
bonus is good. So when you get an increase in your salary or you get an extra bit, it's a bonus. Yes, it's a good thing. So bonus is, means good. And verus is true. And a doctor is a teacher. Okay. Uh, and not the physician, the, the medical doctor that for whom we use the term. In fact, the term doctor means teacher and it was used in the universities. So those who taught at universities were doctors and we still have that, the PhDs, doctor of philosophy. Um, and anybody who taught in university was considered, was called a doctor. Now, the medicine was one of the areas in which um, one could obtain a, 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 a doctor, doctorate. So the, the term was just used by doctors, by medical students. Um, professionals, <coughs> bad me. So we have bonus et verus doctor est. So where's the verb? The verb is est. So he is. <clears throat> so he is. So we look now and look for the noun. Now the noun there is doctor. Okay, that's the noun. So that means that the others must be. Well, we look at them, bonus is in the um, nominative case. So that gives us a hint that it must be an adjective. And verus is also in the ablative case. So that tells us also it is the adjective. And we have the conjunction, the et, which means and, you know. So we have, for instance, et cetera, means and all those things, all those other things. Um, so we have then, when we translate est, he is a doctor, good and true. Or to make it um, read easy in English, we say he is a good and true doctor. Or we could say the doctor is good and true. Okay, so doctor is good and true. He is a good and true doctor. Um, if I were to say the doctor is good and true, I would be using it as an attributive, as a, sorry, as a predicative, because I'm using the word is, okay? So, right, let's look at the predicative adjectives, okay? Now we said, is an art, is something, gives a hint, and that's what it might be. So the, pred, the in the case of the predicative adjectives, the adjective predicates something about the noun. Okay. What is it? It's making an affirmation or an assertion about the noun. So we have the noun, the day. That's the noun. I'm saying something about the day. Well, the day is sunny, or it is a sunny day, would be the attributive, but the day is sunny. It is, the day is rainy, the day is cold. It's almost as if I'm saying that the day is something else, okay? So if we look at um, this, these two Latin, or this three Latin words, look for the verb, first thing, sunt, they are. Okay, so where is the noun? Well, angelus is an angel, they are, so it's plural, so angeli must be plural, and therefore it is um, the nominative case. So they are angels, and we have boni. So we, have, we must say the angels are good. The angels are good because of the sun. So we have angels are good. <clears throat> we could say they are good angels, but that would be the attributive case because I'm describing what kind of angels they are. I'm saying the angels are good. Okay. And then the substantive adjectives. Okay. <clears throat> These adjectives stand in place of the noun they modify. Okay. So in, with the, mount, the noun is going to disappear and the adjective is going to take over. So the adjective is behaving as if it were a noun. So it's used in a sentence as a noun, like a noun, instead of a noun. 
Okay. So a substantive <clears throat> acts as a noun. It is sunny outside. Well, if it's sunny, it tells us the sun's in the sky and therefore it must be the day. It is a sunny day. I don't need the outside, but if I say it is sunny outside, it means it's a sunny day. So day has completely disappeared. We wouldn't say it's a sunny night or a sunny tree or a sunny dog, you know? It, it has to be day, I think. You know, I can't think of anything else it could be. So it's a sunny day outside. Who would think language is so interesting? Okay. Here's another one. <clears throat> Beata, remember three um, vowels, so we must have three um, um, syllables. Beata, bona est. Okay. So again, we look in. Est, he, she, it is. Okay. So something is, now we're looking for the noun, but there is no noun there. Beata is an adjective and bona is an adjective. So beata means bless, blessed. Boda means good, like bonus, but this time we have bona. I'll, I'll be explaining that a little later on. So we have blessed, good, is. So we can say a good, what's, and the, the beata and bona are feminine and they're singular. So it's a bless, it's a bona, it's, it, it's close to the verb. So we're gonna say a good something is blessed. Well, it's feminine, so it must be a good woman is blessed. Or we could also say a blessed woman is good. Yeah. So again, it's a matter of feeling what, what are we trying to, to, to convey in the sentence. But here it's, uh, uh, the, the, it makes more sense to say a good woman is blessed. Of course, this equivalent is saying that a blessed woman is good as well. It's, it's, it's just a matter of, um, um, uh, the, uh, I'm not what's the word, I can't think what the word is. Uh, 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 I'll leave the word, I can't think what it is, but I know what I want to say. Okay. Semantics. Semantics, that's the word, thank you. Yes. Okay, so we're going to look now at um, the first and second declension adjectives. So I've, I've um, I've just started by giving the endings, hoping that you would recognize them. So we have um, the declensions at the top, the two declensions, first declension and second declension. Then we have the gender. In the first declension, they're all feminine. In the second declension, they're either masculine or neuter. Okay. Then we're going to look at the cases. So the cases, are. Uh, um, or the number, I should say, that should be case and number. So it'd be singular and plural in either case. So in the nominative case, okay, it's gonna nominative case. First declension, all feminine, the nominative case, the, the word, the noun ends in A and the plural AE and the vocative A and AE. Okay, we, we did this before. In the accusative, it's arm, and as, am and as. And the genitive is ae, same as the nominative plural, and arum in the plural. The dative is ae and is, and the ablative is a and is. So that takes care of the first declension, all feminine. We go to the second declension, okay, which can be either masculine or neuter. So when we look at the masculine, they can either be singular or plural. So in the nominative case, we have US with this plural I. In the vocative, we have E with this plural I. And that's, that's the only, only one that really changes. 
the, the masculine pocketing second declension. In the accusative, we have um and us. Okay. Remember the 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 um, governing letter is in the case of the feminine a and in the case of the second masculine, the second declension masculine is you, you. So you um all the way through. And then the genitive, we have I and oru, sub aru. And then we have in the dative o and is, is, and then ablative we have o and is. And then when we do the neuter, the second declension neuter, <clears throat> for the nominative, vocative, and accusative, we have um. This in the singular, singular neuter, um. For the, and this, this is going to apply, you need to remember it, that whenever we're talking about the neuter, the neuter noun, in the nominative, vocative, and accusative are the same, both in the singular and in the plural. Okay, so <clears throat> all the, <clears throat> pardon me, all the, um, the uh, neuters will, will end like that. Okay. And also the, the, it ends in A as well in the plural. So the genitive is I. So this is, it's now like, like the, the masculine in the genitive, the dative, and the ablative. Okay, masculine and neuter are the same. Okay. Right, so we've, we did this before, um, and we've done it again. And now we're going to put in some adjective. We start with uh, the first, which is going to be Holy, let's be holy. Now, in the in the dictionary, um, and that, that's one of the things that's held me back in the dictionary, is that uh, I'm trying to find a, a, a way that to to um, put the, put words together so it's not to be confusing. But in the dictionary, you'll see for the adjectives, it's it, we use in sanctus, which means holy. We use sanctus all the time. In, in the mass, sanctus, 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 um, um, sanctus filius, filius sanctus, uh, parte sanctus, and so on. So in the dictionary, you'll see sanctus a um. So they won't put sancta or sanctum because the the um, adjective they you will get the masculine first, and then the R will be the feminine, and um will be the neuter. Okay, <clears throat> and so I've changed. What you're seeing is the, the same table as before, except I've switched it around um, to follow the, the the pattern in the dictionary. So we have started the second declension, and then the first, and then we have the masculine, neuter, and feminine. Okay, so we have then in the case of Santos. Sanctus in the nominative case means holy, okay? And this plural is sancti. So it's just like the noun, okay? So <clears throat> I have, uh, as we said, if we use it as a substantive, it means a sanctus would be a holy man, okay? If we go to the first declension where we have sancta, it will be a holy woman. I'm using it as a substantive where it stands in place of the noun. Okay. And if I use sanctum, it will mean the holy place or holy thing. Okay. So we have sanctus as the nominative singular, and then we have sanctus as plural. Okay. If we go across to the neuter, we have sanctum, which is a holy place or holy thing, and sancta, which is a holy thing. Okay, plural. But if we go again to the next column, we see the feminine sancta. So it's the same as the plural of the neuter plural and the singular plural. And so you say, well, how are you going to know which? Well, we go to the verb. Because if we had sunt, it would immediately be plural, sancta, the holy things. But if I had est, 
will be and Sancta S will be a holy woman. It is a, she's a holy woman. Okay, so the verb is very important. Whether it's, the verb is plural or whether the verb is is singular, so that will tell us something about the the um, adjective and the noun. Oh, well, let's go on. So that's a nominative case. As I said, it, it follows the same pattern for the nouns in the first and second declension. Now, I hope I've not lost anybody. Bear with me. The vocative. Okay, the vocative, the masculine singular is strange because it just adds an E. That's the only one, that's the only case we have to worry about, that one. So when we have Sante, it means, oh, holy man, oh, holy person, you know, but it's masculine, so it must be a male person. And Sante, holy people, you know, oh, holy people. Um, and then we go to Sanctum and Sancta again. And uh, then we go to the feminine, we have Sancta and Sancte. Okay, as in the nominative. For the accusative, again, head the masculine and sanctum. So that, that is the recipient of the, the, the verb, the action, and sanctos. Okay, so it's very much like what we what we um, did um, did before, you know, with uh, masculine nouns. And then we have the neuter, sanctum and sancta again. And then similarly for the first declension, we're in sanctam and sanctas. Um, okay, so then we have a little problem and I'm only bringing this up because I know the, you'll come up in question time, but you don't have to worry about it yet. Um, you look at the neuter, you see that nominative, octave, accusative, all the same. You know, so how are you going to distinguish between them? Well, again, it will depend on the noun. The noun will tell us which one we want, okay? So we, we don't have to fret too much. So again, sentence, look for the verb, look for the noun, then look for the adjectives and see where best the adjective fits, you know? Um, the genitive, okay, as, as before, um, we have um, sancti sanctorum, sancti sanctorum, the same, and then sancte sanctarum, and the dative sancto, um, and sanctis, and sancto sanctis, same masculine and the neuter, the, the same, and then the sancte and sanctis for the, for the feminine, first declension, and the ablative is the same again. So, we all, all we've done is use um, looked at nouns, the nouns we did before, first and second, and we've just seen that the adjectives just fit plunk into them, same pattern. They fit in this, they fit in the, the same clothing. So it's nothing new except that now we have a word that's describing a noun. That's what we've done today. A word that's describing a, a noun. Okay. So then let's look at some adjectives. We have to do this. So we have some. And again, I've tried to stick to adjectives that would be familiar or, um, to you. So we start off with antiquus. And that is how you will see it in a dictionary. In a dictionary. Antiquus are um, for the comma. Okay, there's a little hyphen. I didn't put the hyphen for the um, but there should be a hyphen there. So that the US in antiquus would be replaced by an A, so be antiqua and then antiquum. Okay, just as we had sanctus, sancta, sanctum. So we had the same here. So we think, well, what does antiquus mean? What does it look like? Well, of course, it's, the English word comes in, of course, is antique which means something old or something ancient and something valuable, okay? So antique is, you can see it's almost evocative because antique is, is the, the, the US is replaced by E, you get antique. Um, okay, so that's easy enough. 
Here's another one. Arduous. Arum. Arduous. Something is arduous. Oh, it's difficult. It's hard. No, Latin is not arduous, I hope. Okay, so, so if it's arduous, it's difficult, it's lofty, it's tall, it's high, it's above, you know. Um, kunk, kunk tus a um is all. Um, and I, I use that because it's going to come up quite frequently. It's quite a popular word. Kunktus means all. So it's kunktus a um, kunta, kunktum. Albus a um, well, albus is white. We get the alb, for instance, which means a white gown. <clears throat> so albus a um. Longus, I wonder what that means. Longus a um, well, it's long. That makes it easy. Okay. Um, we we have other words, of course, like longitude. You know, um, we we came. I think we came across longitude in one of our um, uh, um, when we're looking at the relationship between uh, English words and um, Latin words. Um, when we look at the cognates. So we, we had longitude. Uh, multus, multa, multum, much, many, a lot, um, and so on. We get multitude, uh, many. Ambiguous, well, that's easy enough. We need to think about this one, which means ambiguous, doubtful, changeable. Okay, so we have ambiguous. Don't forget that when we have the W, no, sorry, the two U's, then we we need two syllables. So ambiguous, ambigua, ambiguum. Ambiguous, doubtful, changeable. Pavus, pava, pavum is small. And then the contrary. Magnus, magna, magnum, which is large, great, important, big. We get magnify to make bigger. Uh, and as I said that, magnus means great or big, large, important, and so on. And we have magnify, and of course we have magnificat, which is a verb. So that's something we'll be doing later on. We'll be looking to see the relationship between adjectives and verbs. We have adjective and adjectives and nouns. We also have adjectives and verbs because we can make something large, we can make something small, we can make something ambiguous and so on. Okay, so Magnus is great, large, important. Verus, we did before with the doctor. Uh, verus, vera, veru. Vera is true. Vera crux, for instance, the true cross. You know. um, so there we have some adjectives. How about some more adjectives? So some more adjectives. We have amicus. Amica, amicum, which is friendly. Now that is also a noun. I hope you remember amicus with a amicus amici, amici is a friend. And in the dictionary, you'd see it as a noun and be friend. But when you see amicus aum, it becomes friendly. Okay, so um, again, you'd if you come, if it's if you saw amicus in a sentence, you you can't just jump on it. You have to see is there a noun that takes precedence? You know, so um, if there were a noun, then then amicus would be an adjective describing the noun. So, so for instance, if you had if you had something like puer amicus est. Okay, so est is he is, um, and then you have amicus, he is friendly, but you have puer. So 
that that is definitely poor is definitely a, a noun so it's a boy so he is a friendly boy you know that's that's how we do it so always we look for the verb and then we look for the noun and then if the adjective noun is similar we have to determine which one is the adjective so beatus we dealt with that uh, beata the mean a good woman so here we have beatus beata beatum is a blessed or a uh, something for reference. So we talk about, for instance, the Beati, that is the blessed, the blessed in heaven, and the Sancti, that is the saints in heaven. So, so Sanctus we dealt with, um, our own is holy. Okay, Sanctus, 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 holy, holy, holy. Okay, and in that case, it's an adjective because Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus, Sabao. Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, is described in the Lord. And that's a peculiarity, actually, of the Hebrew. Because in Hebrew, there is, they do not have the comparative or the superlative um, adjectives. Um, so, if if you said something, if you want to say, um, he's holy, you'd say he's in Hebrew. You'd say whatever the equivalent word is, holy. If you want to say he is um, holier, you say he is holy, holy. And if you say he's the holiest, you say holy, holy, holy. Um, so it's one of the peculiarities. That's why in the Hebrew you frequently find the, the, the triple. The, the repeating of the word three times. Um, there, there are others. I'm just trying to think um, what they are. Okay. Aridus, arida, aridum is arid or dry. So I have a desert that's arid, it's dry. Um, dignus, um, and this is an adjective that takes the ablative. It means worthy of worthy of praise. So um, the whatever noun it is, the noun will be in, in the um, ablative case. Furtivus, furtive means something stolen. Furtivus, furtiva, furtivu. Vicinus or vicina or vicinum. Well, that's close by neighboring. In the vicinity of, close by, hmm? vicinity. Iratus, irritated, angry. So iratus, irata, iratum. Supremus, suprema, supremum is the supreme, the highest, the furthest, the last, the greatest, you know, whatever. Rotundus, rotund, 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 as we say in English, is someone who has a lot of ways all the way around. Um, rotunda, rotundum, excelsus, excelsa, excelsum. So we have Gloria in excelsis Deo. So excelsis is in the ablative because we have the in excelsis. Yeah? So it's ablative. So it's in the highest, the lofty, the most exalted um, position. Yeah? And vivus, vivere, to live, to be alive. Vivus, viva, vivo. Viva, viva, um, no, alive, life, life, no, to be alive, living. Um, okay. okay, oh. Right, so I'm going to use the confitio again. Um, so we can look at the adjectives now. So we go confitio, I confess. Deo omnipotenti, to God the Almighty. And it is in the dative. Okay, so it's to God. Okay, Beate Marie. Virginie, Sempe Virginie. Okay, so I confess it has to take the dative case. 
That's why we have Marie. Okay. So we confess in two, Mary, always a virgin. And Beata describes, is describing Maria. Okay, so since Maria is Marie, it must be Beate. Also, we come to Michael. Okay, we confess in two Michael. So it's Michali. We'll, this is a third declension. That's why it's high, but we, we deal with that in due course. But it's dative, so it's Beato this time, because it's masculine, and the Archangelo is masculine, and it's also a noun, as Michael the Archangel. Okay, so it's Beato. Beato, Ioanni Baptiste. Remember last week we said Ioanni, John, is in the dative. It's masculine, so it's Beato. So it's in, it's in dative and it's masculine. And Baptiste is feminine form. Its first declension is feminine, but it's masculine, like Agricola and Nauta and so on. So it's one of those, those half dozen words, which are first declension, but they are masculine. So it's just one, a blip. Okay. So we've not reached the apostles, Peter and Paul. So the apostles, so it's apost apostolos, ap apostolus is the, the, the nominative. We want the dative and we want it plural, so it's apostolist. And they are holy, so we have sanctis. So the sanctis corresponds to the apostolis, so it's dative. And <coughs> pardon me. So it's dative and it's plural. Okay. So, um, yeah, was I going to say anything about that? That was before I coughed. Um, okay, so it's plural and it's um, dative. Uh, et, that's a conjunction, is joining, and omnibus, all, we'll deal with that, that's the declension. Sanctis, all the saints. So, notice that is sanctis, so the saints, just yes, saints. Okay, m m masculine, ma uh, male and female saints, all of them. Okay, because that uh, I have sinned exceedingly. Okay, um, cogitatione verbo et opere. So I don't even need the, the um, preposition because the sense follows, there's no confusion. Okay, and in addition to that, I have the um, um, uh, ablatives there. So, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. And here we have um, two adjectives. Culpa is fault. Okay. So, through my fault, we have mea, which is my, because we, have, we haven't done it, but it'd be meus, mea, Meum. Okay. So it's my fault. My fault. My maximum fault. Now, what do we said that the, the um, adjective is qualifying the noun? The noun here is culpa, fault. Okay. And we said that the adjective ordinarily, generally, follows the noun. So we could have said culpa mea, but in this case, we put the, the mea is put in front because the emphasis is on me. It is my fault and nobody else's. Okay, so this, the putting the mea in the front of culpa here makes it more than personal. It, it, it's almost a regret, it's mine. I take, I take charge of it, I take possession of it. I have done it. So that reinforces the, con the, 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 the confession in acknowledging our, our sinfulness. Therefore, idio, pray call, I, pre I beseech, I beg. Now, they are Mariam, we're asking, so it's accusative, we're asking, Mary, always a virgin. We're asking, 
uh, Miriam, so it's in the accusative, and the beatum, which describes her, must also be in the accusative. But if we didn't have Miriam there, we could say, therefore I beseech a blessed woman, you know, and so on. And then we go to, to um, Beatum, Michaelem, Archangelum, it's accusative again, we're asking them, you know. So, so we have Archangelum, which is the um, accusative form, and there must be Beatum, okay? If we didn't have um, Michaelum, uh, Michaelem there, and, and Angelum, we could say the blessed man, okay? Or Beatum, Ioannem Baptistam, the same thing here. And we have the accusative of Peter and Paul this time, Petrum et, et Paulum, but the plural, so Apostolos, accusative plural, and Santos to correspond. And Omnes, all the same, Santos. Again, it takes the accusative and Omnes, Notice corresponds to the Sanctus, but that omnes is third, um, third declension, which we haven't dealt with. To pray for me, pro me, uh, the, we have the preposition, pro for me, me, ad dominum deum. So that's uh, um, ad dominum deum nostrum. We have this motion to God. Remember what we said about the prepositions that, you know, if it takes the accusative, there's a motion. So we move in from one place to another we're going to we're asking pray to god go to him and pray for us um and pray pray for me so we're praying to our god for me amen which is never translated and that is in this end of the section eight gracias for peace Oh, okay. Here I am again. Okay. Um, that I hope that wasn't too intense, and I hope it um was pleasurable, um, enjoyable. I gave um I gave the, I sent out also the exercise the solutions to the exercise um that we had last week. But it's, I know it's 36, so perhaps we can um, look at that next week. So I'll take any questions you have now. And um, uh, before we end, for those, if anyone came late, I apologize. We had a little problem with the last two um, sessions. That's Sunday, last Sunday of this week and last Thursday. The recordings, um, for some reason, the, the, the recordings didn't come out. And so I will um, redo them uh, and um, circulate them at a later date. So apologies for that. Especially Sunday was quite a good session. Um, lots to think about. So any questions? Father, um, you, it says omnipotenti Deo. Yes. And that, I've sort of tried to look it up on my phone. And it is just talking about God as singular, one person, yes? Oh, no, one nature, not one person. One nature, one yes. nature. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I was just, yeah, okay. Because yes. yeah. TI in my mind, I don't know which language I'm thinking of, but it looks like a plural thing, but it isn't. It's just a singular, isn't it? And yes, um, because God refers to nature. If we refer to persons, then um, it, it's a different construction. Um, so we have the Gloria, Gloria Patri, et Helio, et Spiritu, et Santo. Here we have distinction of persons. But a good, a good question, good point. Sorry, there um, we have the what of persons. Sorry, just can you just repeat what you said there, talking about the... No, I said it's a good question, because that, that um, when we did theology, that was very confusing. Should, should we, when we refer to God, should we shouldn't we be saying they rather than he? And um, that led to a lot of discussion and more confusion. But if we're referring to the nature, God as nature, then it's one, it's singular um, and it's masculine. 
But if we, if we want to make distinctions, then we speak about the three persons. And St. Thomas gives the reason. He says, because, because there's one will in God, the three persons have the same divine will. Um, they, anything that's, that God does, all three persons are doing it. So in the creation, all three persons created, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit created. It wasn't the Father creating and the Son and Spirit um, doing nothing. They were actually, it was the divine will operated. And in, in the redemption also, there was one divine will. The, all three persons had decided. Um, see, I'm really getting the, a little confu confused already. Um, the, so they decided that yes, this the, the redemption will take place this way. And so the second person became man, and that is why he had to have a human will, because he's now got another nature. The nature, the the will, is attached to the nature. If he didn't have a human will, then he couldn't truly represent us. It it. Um, Let's get into theology. He wouldn't truly represent us, but the fact he had a human will, it meant his human will and his human nature had to conform to the divine will and the divine nature. And so in the garden, he could say, not my will, but yours be done. And before that, he'd said, I've come to do the will of my father. Yeah. Father, it was a very value, value, value okay. answer, Father. <laughs> okay. Value in there. Uh, Richard, uh, yeah, I uh, two questions. One is, um, I'm trying to simplify this for my own self, uh, and I'm That's focused good. on your first part, uh, number four, that adjectives always agree with nouns they modify in case, number, and gender. Fine, yes. that really simplifies it for me. Uh, but not necessarily in declension. Yes. Okay, right. So for instance, if we have um, a third declension, okay, um, noun, um, such as um, sol um, the sun, solis, um, mm. and we wanted to say, um, it's um, oh, I, I know, a bright. Let, let me see. Let me take another example. Mm -hmm. um, pate, pate is, is third declension. Okay. okay. So P A T E R, pate, father. If I want to say a good father, I'd say pate bonus. Mm. Okay. Now, if I were to put that in the genitive, pater becomes patrice of the father, but bonus will become boni. Okay, so it doesn't correspond. Whereas if I wanted to say um, a, 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 a good man, mm -hmm. vir, bonus, and if I were to put it in genitives, very bony. Okay, so the, the a, a first or second declension noun could also describe a third declension, third, fourth, or fifth declension. Oh, Sorry, yes. a first or second declension adjective can also describe a third, fourth, or fifth declension noun. Yes, of course. Okay, yep. thank you yep. for that. A more, uh, a more um, off-base question here is, uh, I was thinking about this this week, my local Catholic school board has gone to non-binary um, pronouns. And I, it struck me that in Latin, as in French and German and so on, Greek, uh, mm -hmm. it would be very hard to put yeah to go into the direction of non-binary pronouns, unlike yes. English, am I correct on that? Uh, Latin, you couldn't do it. You're absolutely right. It's not possible in Latin. <clears throat> it's not possible at all. And the example would be, 
if we're talking about the human race, we have homo hominis, third declension. Um, and that includes men and women, children. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you want to talk about the individual man, we use VIR, V-I-R. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to speak about a woman, we use Mulier, M-U-L-I-E-R. Mm-hmm. If you want to speak about a boy, use Pue. If you want to speak about a girl, use um, Puella. Okay. So we don't, there wouldn't be that confusion at all. At all. Because if you, if you wanted to speak, um, it just doesn't happen. And it doesn't need other languages to does that. It's a peculiarity of English, which has been abused. Uh, very much. <laughs> it struck me this week, yes. Thank you. Okay. I think um, Joseph Pieper, who is a German uh, theologian, he wrote a very interesting book, um, the, uh, the, the Abuse of Language, I think it's called. Um, Um, and th- this was written a long time ago in the, in the 50s or 60s, I think. And he was, he'd already foreseen this, this problem come, uh, arising. Or the, is it the abuse of language or power of words? Um, I, I can't remember offhand. It's, it's well worth reading. It's P I E P E R, Joseph Pieper. Any other questions? Sorry, spell it again for the P-I-E. Say Joseph. it again? Yeah, Joseph. What? P- spell the name, the surname? Uh, P-I-E-P-E-R. P-I-E-R. Can't remember the exact title. Okay, any other questions? In fact, I like the question that, was, that Richard brought up about the, um, the language, the abuse of language and the... Uh, no, any, nothing else, so we can end then. Thank you very much. Um, I'll try and get out, get um, an updated dictionary with more of the words, um, hopefully this week. Um, um, just, I'm, I am planning to travel to the UK uh, next month, so the which will be um, Passion Week and Holy Week. So um, I've got I, I have a, a sort of funeral to to attend. Um, Some, and of course there'll be the time difference. So. We we'll probably have to skip class, certainly in Holy Week, um, and East, including Easter Sunday, of course. Um, I'm sure you don't be studying. Well, the mass you might want to study, but I don't sure you going to this Latin in Holy Thursday. So that the week of Holy Week, um, we we'll, we we'll skip and we we'll, we we'll recommence the, the week after. Okay, thank you. That, that's just a, a warning. I'll confirm later on. Um, as we come closer, in case you wanted to plan it. So thank you very much for your attention, interest, contribution, and I hope I have not added confusion upon confusion. So we end with the Angelus as usual. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be thou me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And the word was made flesh and the world in Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises. Let us pray. Pour forth and beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom 
The incarnation of Christ, thy son, was made known by the message of an angel. May by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ, our Lord. May the divine assistance remain always with us. May the soul of the faithful departed, the mercy of God, rest in peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you, remain with you now and always. Let us bless the Lord. Okay, have a good evening, everyone. Thank you, Father. Thank you very much, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank everyone. you, Father. Have a good evening. You too. Bye.